Welcome to HashiConf Europe. Thanks for attending my talk. My name is Tracy Jaquin, and this talk is GitLab plus Nomad equals a dream come true. I have a minor in math, and that is math. My handle is at Tracy Poo, and on Twitter, I am from the Internet Archive. I've been there for over 20 years now. I'm the second longest person there, aside from our founder. My title is TV Architect, and I work on video, audio, DevOps, and JavaScript. The slides are at tracy.dev.archive.org if you want to follow along. And we're going to be using some code and techniques from a repo linked below at gitlab.com slash internetarchive slash nomad. So you probably don't know me, but whether you're my friend or family or, or colleague or whatever, at some point my talk will our talk or discussion will start going towards containers, whether you like it or not. So that's just something to know. If you invite me in, you get a Trojan horse. I love containers. So why are we here? And I don't mean in a French existential way, although that is interesting. We are here at, at this talk to see how easy it is to use GitLab with Nomad clusters. GitLab already works with Kubernetes out of the can. We want to make it work with Nomad just as easy. In fact, better. So here's GitLab plus Nomad. We're going to do it with a two line YAML file and two CI CD variables, and that's it. And we'll have a demo to show it too. Here's the overall approach and goal for this whole technique and project. We want to replace Kubernetes with Nomad. We want to use GitLab's normal auto DevOps, they call it uh, pipelines, so we can do their build phase, which works really great. It'll push to the registry, then we can use the test. All that works great. No need to change that. We just have to customize the deploy phase, so pretty straightforward. And again, last reminder, tracy.dev.archive.org to follow along. So here's how we're going to do it with stick figures. Your devs are going to commit and push, just like normal. That's going to kick off a CI CD normal pipeline with GitLab. Their, their standard pipeline is great. It's going to start off with a build phase. It'll then move to a test phase. That's optional, but you should be testing. And then it will move to a deploy phase, which is what we're going to customize. So here's how we do it. We've got a slew of variables from GitLab, they all start with CI underscore. So we're going to make use of those and leverage those. The other thing is we have these environment variables that are, we're going to use for customization called nomad underscore var underscore and nomad underscore secret. So here's a couple of examples. We've got a commit SHA here. So that's the current commit, the checksum of the thing that's running through the pipeline or the latest thing from Git. And we've got this nomad var slug, which is a way to customize and make nice host names and semantic kind of goodies and goodness. We're going to combine all those together into a project nomad generic template. And then that's going to ship off to nomad with a nomad run right to your nomad cluster. So that's our deploy phase. So it's a few minutes in. You might be feeling a little tired. Maybe you've been watching a lot of talks. But here's the too long didn't read. All you need is two settings two CI CD variables. So you just put that in your GitLab repository. I like to put it in the group one level higher, and that'll apply to all of your projects. So you just add your nomad adder, your nomad token for whatever your cluster is. That's a fake token. And then you do a two line uh, YAML file include. So that's all you need to include. You would put this file as a GitLab CI YAML at the top of, of each of your repos, and you never have to change it because everything's getting included. So we are including another GitLab CI YAML file. So what's in that included GitLab CI YAML file? Well, basically, there's some other stuff, but it's really focusing on the deploy. So you start the deploy. You start a little script off to figure out how to actually do the, pull the deploy off. So you pull down this project nomad file, nice and easy. We're just going to rename it just to call it HTL. And then we switch out this nomad var slug uh, inline. That's just because we can't quite do that in the project HTL right now with uh, the HTL spec. Don't have to worry about that too much. We take all the CI underscore variables, and we're going to stuff it into a little JSON-like encoded environment variable so we can use it in the project template. And we do the same thing with a nomad underscore secret with a slightly different version, but it's the same, uh, slightly different format. But we're going to then pull those environment um, two files in with the project HL, combine those, send those to Nomad with the Nomad run, and it's off to Nomad uh, with your deploy job. So it's deploying. If you want to see more um, and see like all of this, you can just look at the link below that says full uh, the full GitLab CI YAML file. So that's including a Nomad project, which we talked about combining the variables. So it's a generic template. It's linked above. 
and it's going to use your GitLab CI CD variables. So here's a couple of other examples. Your ref slug is the branch name of the, of the pipeline that's running, and the CI registry image is the current uh, Docker registry image that's been pushed to Docker from your Docker build and test phase. So we're just going to go ahead and use that. Uh, you might have some customizations, like maybe you've got a memory or CPU tweak. You can do that pretty easily. You might have a secret like a database URL. This is all going to leverage HDLv2, which is great. Thank you so much for it, which allows you to do things like loop over things in your config. So in this case, we're going to loop over a bunch of ports that are going to be public to uh, out to your web servers. In this case, maybe we've got a, a Postgres port that also needs to be public, or not public, but needs to be accessible within your, your job task. So we can just loop over those. And this little thing here, all that's doing is making it so it's easy so us, we can refer to things not by their port number, but by a port name. You can see more examples by uh, clicking on some of those links. So let's say you want to just try a minimal project. You don't want to get like the whole thing. You just want to try the minimal project you can use with GitLab. Well, we're going to show you how to do that right here. So we're going to call the job hello world. That's how you start out your Nomad job spec. We're going to start out with another group that's going to group a few things together. And we're going to say, hey, I'm going to make a web server and it's going to be running on port 5000. So in this case, we're going to set up a task as part of the group. That's how you do this. And we're going to say, we want you to run Docker. That Docker image is using that CI registry image, talking back to your registry uh, based and, and the, the thing that was just built. It's a little bit of a longer thing, but it's using those CI CD variables that come right from GitLab. And it's saying, I am going to be running on port uh, 5000 or HTTP. Most people's GitLabs have our private uh, registry. So in this case, we're going to uh, set it up so you can do the Docker login. So this, that's this little auth stanza. So that, again, comes right from GitLab. Just use that easy peasy. And then we do a little service stanza. The service stanza is what's going to tell the load balancer, like, hey, I want you to use this new host name. So we're going to use this um, kind of var slugs kind of things. That'll give you a nice semantic host name. We're going to be using it on port HTTP. And while we're at it in the service descriptor, you say you can set up a little uh, health check task. So console and Fabio, the load balancer, are going to see that and say like, okay, I'm going to be checking every 10 seconds with latency of up to two seconds, and I want to see the slash page with a 200 request. If you have Nomad, you could try this out right now. You've got your Nomad adder, Nomad token in your environment. You can just pull down this file and run it. It should just work. Talking about the Nomad var slugs. So it's nice to have host names that, are, that don't look like a bit bit.ly address. Bit.ly is nice, but nice to have nice host names. So in this case, we use the GitLab group, and then we use the GitLab project, and they're slugified and dashed in between. Those come from right from GitLab. And if you're not using the main or master branch, we'll add the, the branch name slugified on the end too, so you know exactly what you're, you're testing or looking at. The Nomad job, job names also get slugified in that same way. I have the same semantic uh, slug. So right here on the left, we've got the job name, and we can see that, for example, the Internet Archive group is running two different projects in this Nomad cluster. One's called Word Salad, a fun game, and the other one is www, which has two branches, the main branch and some feature branch that someone's working on. Everything's happy. We're all happy. So now it's time for demo time. Yay, demo time. We're going to create a new GitLab repo, and we're going to deploy it to Nomad. So we're going to do it as a hello world kind of classic thing. We're going to do it in three files and in slightly less than 10 lines. So here we are with a clock.js file. We're going to just do a simple node.js thing that does the minimal HTTP server. And every request that comes in, it's going to answer the time and date. It listens on our port 5000, our main web port. Then we add a Docker file, which is pulling from node Alpine, the fast version, which is optimized for node, npm, and yarn. We're going to copy all the files into slash app, and then we're going to say when the container runs with that last line, hey, node, I want you to run this file app.clock.js. And then we just include our two-line GitLab CI YAML file. Nice and easy peasy. OK, so here's our demo. And again, just three files. Make it nice and easy. I'm going to go ahead and copy the first few lines for the clock.js. And I'm going to switch to an open tab where I've got a group already set up at Internet Archive. I'm going to make a new project from scratch. So I'm going to create a blank project. Type, type, type. We'll call it hashicot conf demo. Nice and simple. And then we'll just do a readme. That's fine. We'll create a new blank project otherwise. 
And now, just to make things easier, because you can do this with the GitLab GUI, you can add files right from the browser. We're going to open three tabs for our three files. So it'll just make it a little bit easier and quicker for them to load. And we're going to start our first file, drop in our little uh, JavaScript fragment. We're going to call it clock.js. And now the code highlights, which is kind of nice. And again, it's just going to listen on 5,000 and answer the time for every request that comes in. I'm going to commit the changes. This will add the file to the repo, nice and easy. And then we can go ahead and get rid of this tab and go for the next file. So in this case, we're going to grab our little Docker file, three line file, and we are going to start it out. And again, it's just a real simple node app and it's super fast, so it should run and, and build super fast. We don't need any extra dependencies because that little web server is already built in. And we should be pretty good to go. We'll do the same thing, just commit the file, send it off to the repo. And now we just copy the GitLab CIML file. That's our little magic two-liner. That's pulling from the Internet Archive project. We make a little type. We don't need a template. We're just going to go ahead and make our own one and commit the changes. So now we've got three files. GitLab CI YAML file and the Docker file are enough to start a pipeline. So we should already see some pipelines firing off from GitLab, and there they are. One has already been auto-canceled just because they're sort of redundant, and that's fine. So let's see how the build's doing. So here's the build, and that's super quick. Um, the, that node image is super small, and we're doing almost nothing, so it's already built very, very quickly. And now let's go back to the pipeline and see how the next phase is doing. This is our custom deploy phase. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And it will be pulling that registry image. It'll be sending off to Nomad. And there's our nice semantic name. So it shows you what name it's deploying to that's clickable. And if you look up above at the gitlab.com, it's just like the project and group. So we just click on it. And there we go. That fast, super easy. It shows us the date and time, easy peasy, just a few minutes. You can be a web app person too. And by the way, this is both responsive and, well, I'm, sorry, I'm just kidding. It is a responsive design though. Okay, so how did that all go down? So normally you're talking about people talking to a browser that's talking HTTPS to your web app or the thing that's running that's usually gonna talk to a load balancer. Your load balancer is probably gonna traf uh, terminate the traffic to HTTP and then send that HTTP traffic onto your little web app container or whatever it is that's running. Often it's a web daemon of some sort, Nginx or otherwise. Uh, it might have a database or some Redis or something behind that that can all be grouped in there, uh, mentally speaking. But when you're using Nomad, you're gonna be doing, and GitLab, you're gonna be using these GitLab CI CD pipelines or maybe you're doing some administrative ta task. You're gonna be talking to your Nomad daemon that's running in your cluster somewhere. Then when you do a job spec or you do a change or something like that, or uh, a pipeline comes through, it's going to talk to your Docker daemon. The Docker daemon is then going to talk to your load balancer and set up your, your new web app. In, in our case here, we're using the Fabio load balancer, so I just labeled it that way. And in the, the Nomad way of thinking and terming, uh, we just call that a task group. So I'll have your database and your, your daemon as a job spec. Uh, the whole thing is going to be talking uh, with console on the side. So console is going to be interacting with your, your web apps. It's going to actually be talking and giving them uh, health checks and making sure they're healthy. If they're not healthy, it will let uh, the load balancer know they're not healthy. So let's say you have five deployments and one of them is like not answering very well. All of your traffic is just going to the four. So that just keeps everything nice and clean. So this is a perfect little environment and it's so perfect. It makes you happy and it makes your customers happy. So really simple, really straightforward. Love this stack. It's my favorite stack. Okay, so if you want to see that whole demo that we just did, you can just go to this URL. And if you want to see the full Project Nomad, you want to see all the little goodies and things you can include and customize, or maybe you want to take it over yourself, or maybe you want to copy it, that's totally fine. It's right here on the link. Uh, so if you want to customize things, let's say you want to maybe have a custom host name, or you want to change the count or the number of things that are deployed, it deploys one by default. Well, let's say you want to deploy 10. 
uh, so 10 things that are running all get all automatically load balanced. You can just use nomad var count, nomad var host names, and things like that. Uh, you can just add any of these to your GitLab CI YAML um, as little variables up at the top, and those will just get included and customize your, your setup. Uh, we did notice at the archive, we run everything on-prem, by the way, so we have our own GitLab, we have our own um, Nomad clusters and Kubernetes clusters. We're mostly moving to Nomad at this point. Uh, if you have issues with Docker login, we did, you might want to consider creating a read registry deploy token, and you can just set those as CI CD variables that will then pass right through into the job spec. And we're using CI R2 user and CI R2 pass, which actually sounds kind of like a droid. Hopefully we don't get a lawsuit, but that will help you out there. Um, all of our devs are using these nice little aliases that make it easy. So whether you're on the command line or whether you're in VS Code, they will look at your context or your current working directory and do some Git information. So you can just type nom SSH and I'll SSH you right into the container of related to the code base you're looking at or the branch you're looking at. Nom CP will hot copy a file, which is really nice, into the container so you don't have to do a full pipeline if you don't like. That's super nice, super nice. Uh, I don't know why everything doesn't have that. And then if you want to do something like, say, like node status or detailed information or some of these other aliases, they're all there in that link above. Uh, if you do Docker builds, um, these two things took me years to figure out. So I just view it as my responsibility to let you know just so you will know as well, if you don't know. If you're using GitLab, um, I recommend a single GitLab CI CD server and not using Docker and Docker, use Docker stock. That way you can build up your cache over time and, and through multiple uh, deployments. Otherwise, Docker and Docker starts out with like blank, 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 and you, you lose all the caching. The other thing is that second link below, GitLab runners and monorepos, it's super good, it's super good. If there's one thing, if you do builds, take a look at that link. It's, it's so, I wish I had found that earlier because if you have big repos that are running through, it's gonna be very hard to get good CI CD times without something like that. Additional help, if you wanna see how we set up our clusters um, with a relatively simple shell script with no dependencies, we can set them up on Linux, um, on DigitalOcean VMs. You can do them as little as $5, uh, $5 a month or $20 if you want the whole shebang with GitLab and GitLab runners. Uh, we can also run it on your Mac uh, or laptop. We've got a script as well if you wanted to um, just take a look if you need HTTPS certs with Let's Encrypt for domain level. And if you just want to see some pipeline examples, there's a link here. So results. So we moved to Nomad um, about a little over a year ago. And after kind of a stormy month with Kubernetes, especially, and talking with our ops people who already knew and loved console. So since moving, we've moved over 70 re uh, repos or re code repositories for our web apps. Over 400 review apps have been deployed. Our deployments are now twice as fast, and all of our main development is using GitLab and Nomad review apps, which is awesome. So takeaway, deploy with GitLab and Nomad, two line GitLab CIML, two CID CD variables. That's it. You'll be off to the rocket races. Go, go, go. This is the end. That's not my cat. Hopefully this cat was not hurt in the making of this video. That's very cute. Uh, I want to thank GitLab and I want to thank especially HashiCorp for this opportunity and for working with us in the industry and vice versa. It's a great relationship. Um, thank you so much. Thank you for attending and have a great HashiCorp Europe.